Hello everyone and welcome to Spiral's webinar on an introduction to coiled spring pins. My name is Chris Jesnak and I'll be one of your presenters today. First off, uh, we want to thank everyone for joining us today. We're excited to share our first webinar with you and before we get started with the webinar, here are just a few logistics. The webinar will be about 40 to 45 minutes of content and then at the end we will allow the balance of the hour for questions. The way we're handling questions is through the question panel, which you should see uh, on your screen on the bottom right hand side. Which, uh, so if you do have questions, please submit them through that panel. We would we'd be happy to answer as many as, as many as we can get to at the end. We'll be sure to follow up with those uh, that have questions we were not able to get to. And just as a reminder, everyone uh, has been put on mute for, for this webinar. So as I just mentioned, my name is Chris Jesnak and I'm the product sales manager for pins at Spiral. I've been with Spiral uh, just over five years in various technical sales and marketing roles. And today I'm joined by my colleague, Mike Pasco. Hello, I'm Mike Pasco. I am the group leader of application engineering at Spiral International. And I've been with the company a bit over 15 years. Okay, thanks, Mike. So here, here we are, just so you know who's presenting uh, to you today. So just a, a brief overview of, of what we're going to go over today. Uh, here's the agenda for the about 40 to, to 45 minutes. First look at Spiral at a glance uh, before we get into coiled pin specifics. We just have a few slides on, on who Spiral is and, and what we do. Next we'll get into uh, coiled spring pin introduction. And then we'll get into the various types of coiled spring pins, both standards and specials. And then we'll touch on our, our capabilities. We'll go into features and benefits and specific to some common applications. We'll talk about some selection criteria and, and design considerations. And then how you might install uh, coiled spring pins and what some different installation methods uh, available for you. Then we'll look at the end, a comparison to some other pins, and we'll wrap up with some resources available uh, for you to help you with your designs. And then at the end, again, about 10-15 uh, minutes, we do have a, a Q&A uh, portion of the webinar. We do have three polls that we're going to issue throughout. Um, so the first one we have, uh, we're going to watch right now. We'll give it about 20 seconds or so if you could answer the poll and then we will continue on. Okay, about five more seconds, five to ten. Okay, thank you. Okay, so before we get into coil pin specifics, here's just a brief overview of Spiral. As you can see, we are a global company with operations throughout the Americas, Europe, and Asia. While you may know of Spiral for coil pin specifically, and, and that is uh, the intention of this webinar today and what we're focusing on, and it's the product we were founded on, we have expanded to other types of engineered fasteners as shown here. So starting on the top left uh, with my cursor in the pin product category, uh, in addition to coiled pins, we also offer slotted spring pins. And then we, we offer solid uh, dowels or pins or what you may refer to as rivets. Um, in the tubular category, alignment dowels and bushings ground hollow dowels for more precision uh, applications, rolled tubular components. And then going over to the top right, uh, we have compression limiters, threaded inserts, spacers, disc springs, custom precision shims, and precision washers. So that covers the fasteners and or what you might call components. Um, and then on the bottom left, it shows our pin installation technology. So we do design and manufacture installation equipment as well um, if, if you're looking to automate the assembly and or a simple manual press. And over on the bottom right, it shows our inserts installation technology. So Spiral, Spiral's been in business for 70 years where our mission has remained contact throughout and that, and that is to reduce your assembly costs and improve quality and increase the life of your assembly. 
A major way that we do that is through our application engineering, uh, which has been used in many different markets from aerospace to medical uh, to appliances, green energy, uh, ag and heavy equipment, automotive, in, in many different industrial markets, and many others um, that, that aren't shown here. Really, any mechanical products that can be joined together are potential users of our products. And each of these markets use coiled spring pins today in various applications. While we're a high quality faster manufacturer, we also are experts in application uh, engineering and making those critical recommendations on the interface between our fastener and your product. We really want to make sure that, that your products go together and stay together for the intended life of the assembly. So a way that we do this, shown on the right, is our five-step uh, application engineering process where we're, we will work alongside your team as, as much as they would like to diagnose the situation, define the requirements, design a solution, and then develop and deploy it. And the best part of this is that it comes uh, complementary to you. All right, so that wraps up a brief overview of Sparrow. Now I'm just going to take a step back and, and look at the history of, of coiled spring pins and review uh, what the product is. So it was invented in 1948 by Spiral um, and it was initially designed to address deficiencies with, with other fastening and joining methods. You look at just a, some basic considerations or physical characterizations of the, of the product. It's two and a quarter coils of metal as you can see on the bottom left diagram just so it shows a cross section. Comes in three different duties so over on the bottom right, you can see it comes in uh, heavy duty, standard duty, and light duty. The differences there are the gauge thicknesses of the strip steel used to form the product. Each one is, is recommended for a specific type of application, which we'll go through um, a little bit later on. And then they're all covered by industry standards, uh, ISO and ASME, and then also various military, government, and, and aerospace standards. And so for, for really, as I just mentioned, for each application, there's many combinations of materials and duties uh, to meet the requirements. Mike is going to get into that a, a bit further. So take it away, Mike. Thank you, Chris. So first, spiral coil pin springs are available in a variety of duties, materials, and finishes. And we've standardized on nomenclature that's intended to ease the process of identification and order placement. So for example, all coiled spring pins begin with the descriptor CLDP. That's immediately followed by the diameter. And bear in mind, this is the nominal hole diameter, not the actual diameter of the pins, which are designed to be larger than the holes they're installed in. Uh, your next number would be your length. In this particular instance, 32 millimeters. The next character stands for duty. And as you can see here, we have standard, heavy, and light. Next is material. B would be high carbon steel. They're also available as a C, a D, or a W, depending on what material is associated with it. And finally, the descriptor of finish, K for plain oil in this case, or T for electroplated zinc. Where applicable, um, specials may use different identifiers. So if you already are familiar with coil pins, it is possible you will have a product that you use with a different descriptor. There are alternative coil pin styles available to satisfy the needs of applications that may benefit from unique features. And we'll start with a, a handful of them. Series 400 headed pins, or flared, Series 400 headed pins can be used for fastening where the head serves to secure a component. That's often practical where the outer component's very thin. They're frequently used to secure the legs of a spring and they may also be used in place of solid headed studs where vibration and force um, exerted is limited. Next, we have the Series 410 flared. This is similar to the headed coil pin, though it's ideal for situations where it must remain flush, and typically the hole is prepared with a receiving countersink to accommodate the flare. Uh, it's also important to note that a Series 410 can be easily manufactured in austenitic stainless steel, our 302 or 304. Moving on to the Series 420 flag pin. This is an excellent choice where gross alignment is required and or a feature to facilitate removal may be necessary. 
Manual installation is typical, and the flag provides a control of depth or a positive stop, as well as something that you can grab a hold of to pull or remove it manually if that is required. The Series 430 bump pin provides an excellent central retention feature designed to limit potential movement. Uh, for example, a bump retained in a collar or shaft where the inner shaft is hollow and you have minimal engagement in the outer walls, that might be an, an appropriate situation for use of the bump pin. And another note, the bump can be located at different points along the length of the pin. It need not be centered. The Series 500 pin, extra light, is ideal for use in light load applications with soft or brittle host materials. And it's also ideal for light duty friction hinges and materials that that don't require a high strength fastener, such as a pill case, a glasses case, etc. Uh, and a version of this pin is also available for cosmetic applications specifically, and that's referred to as the Series 550. Finally, the Series 600 Superflex is intended to provide reduced insertion in difficult host materials, and that might include laminations, some sintered or cast materials. Spiral possesses the ability to produce coil pins from a variety of materials across a broad range of diameters and lengths. So we'll cover a few potential variations now. Uh, in regard to standard materials, we offer high carbon steel and alloy steel, stainless austenitic, and stainless smart and citric or 420 chrome in our case. Uh, just an FYI, there are special materials available as alternatives when they're necessary. For example, we do manufacture pins out of Inconel for either very high or very low temp applications, also those requiring uh, resistance to certain corrosive environments, beryllium copper and 316. There are others available upon request and if we can manufacture a spring out of it if it possesses forming characteristics and the spring characteristics necessary, it may be a potential alternative to the materials listed here. In regard to standard length and diameter, if you uh, get offline and look at the catalog at your, at your convenience, you'll find that we've summarized the standard product offering within this, this small chart. So we manufacture them in diameters of 031 to 3 quarters of an inch or 0 0.8 to 20 millimeters. Length diameter gener uh, ratios for each duty are listed here and our largest length diameter ratio standard is 15 to 1. It is again important to note that we do deviate from these standards when necessary although you're always going to have your your lowest cost solution if we're able to design a standard in from the from ground the uh, ground level. In regard to internal processes Spiral heat treats all of our standard and semi-standard materials in-house. We use vacuum for chrome and ink canal. Uh, our cleaning processes are also in-house. We've got solvent degreasing cleaning capability as well as traditional aqueous wash methods. Spiral can also provide oil-free certified product where appropriate. That would be unique to stainless steel. And again, where appropriate, stainless steel parts may be passivated in-house. I'll pass it on to Chris. All right, thanks, Mike. All right, so before we get started, we actually have our, our second of three polls. Right, so we're again going to take about 30 seconds or so, and then we will continue on. Okay, about 10, 15 more seconds. Okay, thank you. All right, so now I'm going to go through some of the major features of, of coiled spring pins and review the advantages and benefits. As a quick recap, 
The coiled spring pin was engineered and designed to address deficiencies uh, with other fasteners. It, it, it's unique features, um, which I have around the page here, um, flexible coil formation, radial tension, strip gauge thickness, or what, we, what we've called duty, outer coil and seam, and then the square ends and swage chamfer combination. Um, all of those together provide advantages and benefits that help it to improve assembly quality, extend product life, and reduce total manufacturing costs. So the first feature that we're going to talk about is the flexible coil formation. So its advantages um, that includes it becomes an active component uh, of the assembly by absorbing shock and vibration. The way the product is formed results in uniform strength and flexibility in any direction. It also spreads compressive stress over the entire pin and does not have stress point concentrations. As shown in the, the diagram on the bottom right, so taking a look down here, uh, coiled pins have the widest hole tolerance allowance uh, when in comparison with slotted spring pins, solid groove pins, and ground dowel pins. So the way, to, the way to read this diagram here is we have the diameter of the fastener on the x-axis and then on the y we have total hole tolerance. So if I choose a, an arbitrary diameter uh, in the middle here, if you go all the way up, um, coiled spring pins would have this uh, hole tolerance which you can just see relative to the others um, how it compares. So how does this benefit you and your assembly? Uh, and what it comes down to is that your assembly uh, lasts longer. By becoming an active component and being flexible, it absorbs shock and vibration, which, which eliminates hole damage. Your assembly time and error is reduced by not needing to orient the product, given it has equal stress distribution. And because of the coil formation, it cannot interlock or nest while in shipping, which, is, which can be common for uh, slotted spring pins. And then your, your hole prep costs are reduced by not needing to do more expensive uh, operations, such as reaming of a hole prior to drilling. Okay. So the second feature to discuss is the fact that the coil pin exerts radial tension on the hole uh, that it's installed in. By conforming to the hole, the pin is not moving material by deformation as other pins would. It's self-retaining. So you can see the picture on the right here, um, just a top view of a coiled spring pin installed into the hole. These two advantages result in reduced assembly time by eliminating the need for, for secondary operations such as eclipse or applying adhesives. And additionally, by not deforming material, the coiled pin eliminates the potential for debris and or contamination in areas of the assembly where cleanliness is very important. Okay, the third feature to discuss is the strip gauge thickness, or what we often refer to as duty. Just as a reminder, the coiled pin comes in three different duties, light, standard, and heavy. And again, that, that refers to the strip gauge thickness. By having standard thickness options, you can dial in on the specific combination of strength and flexibility you're looking for for your application requirements. This means that you can match the pin design for ultimate compatibility with your host material, whether it be a soft plastic or, or a hardened steel. The picture on the bottom right shows a top view of spring pins installed in plexiglass and held up to light with a polarized filter. The heavier the duty, the larger the radial tension on the material. So what we have here are four different fasteners or spring pins installed into the same plastic. And what you can see here is that heavy duty and slotted spring pins have similar high stress concentrations when installed in plastic material. So that's which is why we would never recommend either, either of them for use in plastic assemblies. Um, when it comes to plastic assemblies, we would make a recommendation for light duty uh, spring pin and or possibly standard depending on the circumstances and the type of plastic. Um, so as you can see, the stress concentration around the pin on, on the plastic reduces as you go from slotted to heavy to standard duty to light duty uh, coiled spring pin. 
heavy duty, and, and then also note that the, the slotted pin has three clear contact areas, as you can see here. These are the only areas it contacts the hole, uh, which does result in higher stress concentration at those points and reduced surface area, uh, re resulting in lower retention of the fastener. Major benefit of light duty coiled spring pins in particular is that in plastic assemblies, especially where, where space is limited for design purposes, and there's, there's need to have uh, for your design thin plastic sections, because it exerts minimal radial tension on the plastic, uh, it really prevents unnecessary stress concentrations that could be problematic. Fourth feature is that the coil pin, is the coil pin's outer coil and seam. The outer seam is tucked, as shown in the diagram, um, which is I show here. So here's the outer coil. What we mean by uh, the seam here is on the very outer coil, this section here. It's actually tucked in, so this is installed in a round hole so that it, it does not interfere with the assembly, especially if it's used in a, in a hinge application. The outer coil comes into contact with over 270 degrees of the hole's circumference, so which is shown by the green section around here. Unlike slotted style that have the three main contact points, this maximizes the retention and ensures the product stays where it's intended to. And the seam design is ideal, especially for plastic hinges, which has been proven by the millions of pins used in plastic cosmetic cases, often requiring upwards of thousands of cycles and having to go through rigorous drop tests. The main benefit is that your assembly goes together and stays together for the intended life of the assembly and even longer. And the last feature to highlight is the square ends and swage chamfer combination. Due to the square straight ends, they squarely seat in the hole, leading to improved assembly and automation. There are no sharp angles or edges, given the chamfers are swaged onto the product, resulting in no hole damage or skiving. The swaging operation results in a smooth lead-in, making hole alignment much easier and reducing the need to put chamfers or countersinks on the hole. All of this in combination improves assembly, especially if you're looking to automate the assembly using a, a bowl feeder. So a lot of engineering effort and design initially went into our original patent on the coiled pin nearly 70 years ago. It has many features specifically designed to improve your product quality, extend your product life, and lower your total cost of assembly. This wraps up the features and benefits section. Now I'm going to pass it back on to Mike to discuss what types of applications the product is commonly used in. Thank you, Chris. So we'd like to take this opportunity to highlight a number of common applications where the benefits of a coiled spring pin would be pronounced. And remember, new applications are often discovered and often discovered by customers that have a familiarity with the product and its benefits. So keep your eyes open for those. The first example that we'll cover is hinge and pivot pins. Coil pins are excellent solutions for both free fit and friction fit hinges. Uh, the range of duties available allows for proper function in everything from brittle plastics to high strength steel. Their flexibility protect the ho protects the host materials as the pin rather than the hole and host material move and they absorb shock and load. When properly implemented, the coil pin can maintain desired fit or function longer than other solutions that may be prone to causing plastic creep or wear-related loss of friction. Uh, extra light duty series 550 pins, as we previously mentioned, are specifically designed for use in cosmetic cases and are widely used in that market. And when we say cosmetic cases, we mean literally cosmetics or makeup. Coiled spring pins are also widely used in heavy equipment and automotive hinges or articulating assemblies. For example, this heavy equipment control panel, control pedal. The next would be fastening. Uh, coil pins allow for wider hole tolerances compared to solid pins, as Chris mentioned. And when replacing screws or bolts, they eliminate a tapping operation or with self-tapping screws, the difficulties associated with engaging them during during high volume installation. 
Uh, again, multiple duties are critical for matching the pin and the host material. And their flexibility can protect host materials where shear loading or cyclic loading may be present. Some fastening applications, it's uh, important to note, might benefit from the use of a flared or headed pin. And here we have two very different automotive applications. One where the pin secures a dipstick blade within its housing. And another that might be familiar with you, a key fob, where the pin is securing the blade within its housing. Moving on to location or locating and alignment, uh, coil pins are an excellent replacement for ground dowels specifically and applications requiring alignment. The coil pins effectively project hole position because they conform to the hole in which they're installed. This also allows for practical interference fits, often hand assembly or a minor press is sufficient. Alignment can be better than solid dowels in some cases due to the methods of installation and assembly. They reduce the need for honing or reaming of holes and can ease, again, downstream assembly. Most common industries served are automotive, heavy equipment, and other applications requiring alignment of components prior to bolt and screw installation. As many aligned components are aluminum, uh, light and studi, light and standard duty are ideal solutions. And one other thing to bear in mind with the uh, alternative to OD ground dowels, you again, you only have to press it into the primary receiving component, the made component, hand press, or a soft faced mallet is sufficient. Moving on to gears and shafts, these are very common applications for coil pins with a long track record of success. The pin's strength, its symmetry, ease of orientation and installation, various duties, ability to protect expensive gears, collars and shafts are all important considerations when selecting coil pins for power takeoff or distribution applications. Uh, shaft applications are common across many industries to include automotive, off-road, heavy equipment, and agriculture. Anywhere power distribution systems require the flexibility and fatigue resistance of a coiled spring pin. Flow restriction. In this example, an automotive fuel injector required a spring stop, yet a solid pin or a press fit solid wall hollow dowel were not appropriate. The coil pin allowed ease of insertion, tuning of the injector, and allowed fuel flow as required. And sometimes it's also used to reduce oil or coolant flow from one area of an engine or machine to another. So it's a flow limiter. And a perfect example, this is a perfect example of where a customer actually identified potential use of the coil pin and it was successfully deployed. As stop pins, in this example, a coiled spring pin is used in two locations within a compressor motor piston. The first pin is installed to prevent piston, the piston ring gaps from becoming aligned, allowing blow-by, and that's visible in the top right. The second location within the same assembly would be to position or to pin in position from the rear, typically from the bottom of the, of the piston itself, the piston pin or connector in position so that it can't move laterally, they, thereby protecting the cylinder wall from potential scoring. And again, here the coil pin's ability to absorb shock and vibration is critical. Uh, for example, they've even proved successful in chainsaw motors which exhibit very high vibration. Finally, reinforcement sleeves. Uh, coil pins, specifically light duty, though sometimes standard, can provide a cost-effective solution for reinforcing inlets and outlets of plastic tanks or vessels. In this example, the application is an automotive fuel reservoir, and the pin may also allow the use of very soft plastics that are desirable for their chemical resistance in these applications, such as polypropylene. In this particular instance, one is installed in both the top and the bottom, so inlet-outlet. We'll move on to some design considerations, uh, starting with starting with alignment. If we look at the first diagram, this demonstrates uh, a coil pin 
being installed 40%, which is less than what we recommend. We typically recommend they be installed a minimum 60% of their overall length. And this provides proper control over free end diameter. Again, it's always important to remember that it is a spring, so you will have a rate of spring recovery or retention of the diameter over the, over the hole size in which the pin is actually installed. We have a couple of examples here. Example one the, uh, is an interference fit. In this example, we are taking advantage of the spring characteristics to achieve the best quality alignment possible with the product. So here, we've taken the full tolerance assigned to a 4 millimeter coil pin, which would be 4 to 4.12. We've divided it in half. We've assigned the upper half to the left-hand component, or the blue. And uh, what this does is it sizes the pin and ensures that the free end of the pin is going to remain slightly larger than the hole in which it's installed. The mating component is then assigned the lower half of the, or the mean to the lower half of the hole, and that way you always have guaranteed interference. So again, you're properly transmitting hole position to the mating component, and it's important to note again that this can be easily pressed into position. Very, very different than a solid pin that might have a neural or an OD ground finish. Moving on to our example number two for a clearance fit. The, in this example, the customer is only looking for a coarse alignment. So we've assigned the full hole tolerance, the 4.06 plus or minus 06, to the primary hole where the pin will be engaged 60% of its length. And we've assigned a larger hole as a minimum in the mating component, in this particular instance, 4.17. And you might ask, why would that hole be larger than 4.12, which is the maximum over here? And again, that's to compensate for spring recovery. So if you want clearance, we have factors we look at that, that can predict the rate of spring recovery, and we'll compensate that with our recommendations. So here you've got a coarse fit, uh, free alignment, no interference. Moving on to shaft design, coil pins are ideal for use in power distribution applications, uh, again, specifically shafts and collars. And here, the pin's ability to absorb shock and load provides excellent fatigue resistance and protects both the shaft and the collar. Uh, diagram 1 demonstrates basic design rules for pin, shaft, and collar applications. So in this particular instance, we're demonstrating engaged length in the outer component and also your shaft diameter. Distance engaged in the collar should be a minimum 1.5 times the pin's nominal diameter and holes should not exceed one-third of the inner shaft's diameter to maintain the shaft's integrity or strength. Diagram 2 demonstrates a common error. This is the introduction of a chamfer leading to the inner component. The pin's provided with a quality swage chamfer, and there's no need for this feature. Um, it introduces a bending moment and reduces both strength and fatigue life as a result. Moving on to hinge design. Uh, here, we're demonstrating proper assembly of a hinge with a coil pin. This is a good example of what you'd end up with if we were partnered at, ground, at the beginning stages of design. We have a pin whose length is properly matched to the mater both materials or components in the assembly. Our engagement length, both within the handle and the pawl, if we look at this times two, is roughly equivalent to that available in the handle. That maximizes friction in this particular instance, which was the objective, and there is no weakest link. Also note that gap between components is minimized, and that again reduces your bending moment and maximizes your friction. To demonstrate how this works in regard to installation, again, we're pointing out spring characteristics. If we were to imagine just the handle portion of this being in place, and we'll leave the paw out of it, the pin would be installed from left to right in this direction, and that leaves us with two span lengths. Both of them are symmetrical or even in length, but they may not measure the same at both ends. 
we would have an unsized end, that end which has never seen the hole, and also the sized end which has been compressed by the hole. At the unsized end, we are retaining a portion of the pin's pre-installed diameter, and at the sized end, we are demonstrating spring recovery. So the sized end will recover somewhat over the hole size in the handle, but not to the extent to which we retain diameter at the unsized end. So in regard to selection criteria, what do we need to know? First, how will the pin be used? Um, what are the performance requirements? It's very, very critical that we have a thorough understanding of how that product is going to be utilized in the assembly, to what forces and loads it's going to be subject. Are they cyclical, uh, et cetera? The host materials are critical to your, to your performance. There are issues of, of galvanic compatibility, and also, is your host material hard enough to withstand installation of the pin without any deformation? Uh, also, what are your space constraints? Uh, what are our limitations in regard to the, to the footprint the pin can, can utilize? To provide an example where we are provided with the information required to make an application recommendation, we'll take a look at a shaft and collar application. In this example, we're presented a shaft and collar or hub requiring a cross pin that will allow for power transfer. So the details provided are as follows. The collar diameter is going to be 18 millimeters, or the shaft rather. The collar or hub is going to be 35 millimeters in diameter. The material of both components, shaft and collar, are cold rolled steel, no heat treat for hardness, so we consider them to be soft. And the applied maximum double shear resultant from torque will be 16 kilonewtons. The environment has been indicated to be oil rich. Based upon this information, Spiral would make the following recommendation, a coil pin 6x35 MBK. And this would be made for the following reasons. The maximum allowable diameter cannot exceed one-third the shaft's diameter, in this case six millimeters. Length is standard and fully engages the collar. This will allow installation flush to one side while still maintaining symmetrical engagement at both ends and that eliminates a potential installation concern with having to go sub-flush. Standard duty offers the best combination of strength and flexibility and unlike heavy duty there will be no risk of damaging the soft host materials when you're installing in the low carbon steel. The stated shear force will exceed that of a five millimeter standard duty pin and if space is available to accommodate the larger six millimeter we're going to assign that one. It possesses a 22 kilonewton minimum double shear strength and that would yield a 50 percent safety factor. As the environment's oil rich there's no concern with corrosion and our plain dry to the touch oil finish would be assigned. This is a standard product from the catalog, and again, if we're in at the ground floor and can make recommendations in regard to your geometry up here, we can provide you with the lowest cost solution. Very important consideration, especially in high volume applications that might be multi-year programs. We'll move on to installation methods. Uh, coiled spring pins can be installed using a variety of methods. Typically, the method of installation selected based upon the volume of product to be manufactured with consideration of labor cost and sometimes shop safety. Uh, a hammer is perfectly suitable for installing coil pins, but this solution may not be appropriate at, for example, 200,000 pieces a year or units per year. Uh, when necessary, Spiral can offer a variety of installation solutions available that are suitable to your volume and your desired cycle time. I'd like to point out that we also offer performance warranty. We're one of the few companies that offers a performance warranty. If we partner with you and commit to a specific cycle time, the equipment you purchase is guaranteed to perform as agreed, and that reduces many of the stresses associated with product launch and ramp. And down below, we're just providing a few examples of models that might be available. Everything from a simple press unit 
all the way up to our cosmetic specific units or the HC where we're actually simultaneously installing more than one pin. Moving on to a comparison of pins, and again, Spiral manufactures all three of these products, spare that in mind, solid, slotted, and coiled pins. It's important to understand that though a coil pin may not always be the most suitable solution, more often we find it is, and to highlight why, we'll review these. So starting with hole tolerance, uh, solid pins require very tight tolerances Typically, honing or reaming, if using a ground pin, is required. And even with a neural or a, uh, or a grooved pin, you're still going to require approximately a 2,000th or 0.05 millimeter hole tolerance. Slotted pins are more flexible and accommodate a larger tolerance, as Chris previously indicated, but they're limited by their gap. If the hole size is slightly too small, the gap will butt and the pin effectively becomes a solid object at that point. So you've introduced the risk of hole damage. Coil pins possess no gap and as such they can't button the hole. Um, their flexibility allows for the largest effective tolerance range of any product for this reason. Hole integrity. Solid pins by design either deform the host material or they themselves are deformed during installation. It's typically the host material that's intended to move. Slotted pins are less prone to damage, but are most similar in strength to heavy-duty coil pins. Um, in softer host materials, hole damage is common and they may not be appropriate. The coil pin is available, again, in a range of duties, and there's an appropriate duty available for virtually all host materials, uh, thus eliminating concerns with hole damage. Shock and vibration. Solid pins, obviously, very low. They can only provide shock absorb absorption within their or the host material's elastic limit, and beyond that, uh, materials will begin to deform. Over time, if loads are high enough, that can result in oblong or oversized holes, and in the end, function or retention may be compromised. Slotted pins. Their flexibility, they are flexible, but once installed, the remaining gap, it's very limited. Uh, once that gap butts due to an applied load, it effectively becomes a solid pin with the same inherent issues. Coil pins, they can't button the hole, and as such, they protect hole integrity over a much broader range of effective hole size. And for an example, it's important to understand if you have a load applied to the hinge that we previously talked about where you have two outside components, it's one, and then you have the center one, and you pull those apart, you're effectively reducing the assembled hole size. And again, this is where coil pin shines. It will not butt as those holes are effectively reduced. When you let go of the force and it snaps back, you've just protected the hole's integrity. Its form has not changed if the duty's been properly matched to it. Automatic feeding. Solid pins, certainly possible. They can be automatically oriented and installed. Uh, important to note, at the, at the back end, they typically require significant insertion force. Slotted pins, not generally considered automation friendly. They're prone to nesting and, and or interlocking within feed equipment. And the quality of the chamfers is typically poor in comparison to solid or coiled pins. Coil pins are ideally suited for use in automated feed equipment, and the standard coil pins are symmetrical. That allows for ease of orientation, and the swage chamfer does allow smooth feeding through feed tubes and shuttle mechanisms. I think another important thing to mention is the coil pin does have that square chamfered end as it relates to the hole, so there's no angularity when the hole meets the or when the pin meets the hole. Uh, the pin will seat squarely, it's more easily aligned, and it will install with less, with less likelihood of damage. So, again, we manufacture all of these solutions and look forward to providing you with the best solution for your application. And then I'll pass it back on to Chris. Okay, thanks, Mike. And just as a reminder to everyone, if you do have questions, uh, please submit them through the question panel, and we'd be happy to go through them uh, in a few, few moments here. Um, now we do have our, our third and final poll uh, that we will issue. Um, we'll take again about 30 seconds or so and we will issue and then uh, carry on.
Okay, we'll give it about uh, 10, 15 more seconds. Maybe five more. All right, looks like we have majority voted. Okay, so now we're going to talk about some resources available uh, for you. Uh, we've got many resources available to help you with your, your fastener selection and product design process. First one we have here listed are application stories and, and white papers. We have a, a ton of information available on our website uh, at your fingertips. So what the thing I really want to point out here is that we may have already uh, have the solution for the application that you're questioning or wondering about. So please ask us directly if we've worked on it before or take a look at all the application stories on our website. Um, and then various uh, technical white papers on fastening and, and joining topics. Secondly, we, we have direct field and application support ready to become an extension of your design team and at your site uh, wherever you are. And so we'll, we'll work with you as much as you would like from the initial design all the way through to manufacturing. We have 3D models available for easy integration into your assemblies. So you can download these and view them right off of our website. So please take a look there. Um, and they come in many different file types, upwards of, of 40 to support uh, whatever software you may be using. We can offer complementary samples of, of standard products. If you're looking to do some sort of testing or prototyping on an application, we'd be happy to provide you with those samples for your use. And then lastly, our engineering analysis and reviews. And again, comes complementary. We can support you with completely new design analysis, product replacement for existing parts for cost savings and or quality reasons. And then, you know, existing, existing parts you have now, um, we can evaluate the fastener portion of that for performance reasons as well. And then uh, uh, various types of, of product testing, um, whether that you want us to verify hole sizing for a hinge application, insertion force for another type of application, and or shear force. Those are just some examples. Um, if you have something in mind uh, related to fasteners, we'd be happy to, to help you out with that. Okay, so that, that does wrap up the content section of our webinar for today. Uh, after we spend about five, five, ten minutes here, looks like with time allowed, we do have a slide where we'll show some future webinars we have in mind. Um, so please stay with us if, if you have the time to spare. So we do have a few questions uh, that have come in. Um, the first one we have is, is from John. Um, question is, is hydrogen embrittlement as much as a concern with coiled pins as it is with slotted spring pins? And what solutions do you use to counter that risk? Mike, I'll do you take, want to take that one? Sure. Uh, yes, hydrogen embrittlement can be a problem, with, obviously, with any of these heat-treated and plated fasteners. So steps that we take to avoid it is to use, number one, finishes that are appropriate. So, for example, with a slotted pin, you might use a mechanically applied zinc rather than electrolytically applied. And in regard to coil pins, we take some of the same measures. Now, coil pins are unique in comparison to slotted pins in that they're, the thickness of each strip is actually thinner, so it's much easier to properly bake them for a, a plater versus a slotted pin. So, nowhere near the extent of the problems. And uh, Bear in mind also, we have those available in 420 chrome stainless steel. We can provide corrosion resistance without having uh, any risk of that. Okay, um, next, next question we have is from Anand. Um, this is coming from oil and gas industry. Uh, sometimes we need to comply with current NACE um, and then MR0175, which requires max hardness RC22 on austenetic stainless steel uh, or 302 materials. I was wondering if the, if the coiled pin will comply with that. Um, he believes the rolling process creates cold work. That's a good question. Unfortunately, I have to take a pass in the majority of it. I am familiar with NACE requirements. 
And we do manufacture product out of, for example, some Inconel uh, to meet certain NACE requirements. But in regard to austenetic stainless steel, you are correct. It will work hard in, uh, during the forming process. But specific to austenetic stainless steels, hardness and tensile strength are not necessarily indicative of one another. You can't make the same connection that you can with uh, high carbon steel, for example. So uh, we'd have to dig more into how NACE is applying that so we can better understand the requirement. Okay, thanks, Mike. Next one we have is from Brandon. Uh, he's asking, how reusable are the coiled spring pins? And I mean, I can at least start there. Um, so it really depends on the, on the application and, and how you're looking to use it. Um, you can you can reuse them in the application, but it would really depend on all the specifics. Um, what type of material it's stalled in? Is it in dynamic loading? Um, and in what condition is it in after the product use? And how long has it been used for? So, yes, it can be reused, um, but it does depend on the circumstances of the application. Okay, next question we have uh, from Gianni. Uh, does it require a special tool to install with a hammer? No, it does not. Just make sure the hammer is bigger than the coil pin. That's the, that's the only thing you need to know. Uh, common error with installing, and it's not just coil pins, it's any spring pin, including a slotted pin, is to try to utilize a punch or something that will enter the ID. Uh, what you do effectively when, when introducing something like that to the product is you prevent it from compressing or conforming to the hole when you're trying to install it. So you can actually damage it. But if you are just using a hammer, simply make sure the end of the hammer is bigger than the pin. Okay, thanks Mike. Uh, Graydon, uh, we have a question on, uh, is a coiled pin a good choice for fastening an aluminum component to a steel component? I can at least start there. Um, it, it can be, Graydon. Um, it, depend on how they're how you're looking to join them together and if it's used for alignment or if that's the main fastening portion keeping those components together the other thing we would look at is engagement in both different both of the parts so how much is it engaged in the aluminum and steel and how much do we have to work with there so it would really depend uh, Mike would you add anything to that uh, just that in many alignment applications especially in uh, heavy equipment and or agricultural where you, for example, would have an engine block that's still manufactured out of cast iron, it would be very common to have mating components such as a, a timing belt or gear cover that is manufactured of aluminum and the coil pins installed in the cast iron block, then it's utilized as an alignment solution for the, for the aluminum um, cover. So very common that it's utilized to pin those two materials together. Okay, so we, we have a question from James. Can I predict spring recovery by using online resources or does a spiral engineer have to evaluate the design? We typically want to be involved in that. We don't, make, we don't provide that information to the general public and the reason for that is because it's, it's highly dependent upon your material, uh, duty that's going to be selected, maintaining the integrity of the hole after installation, your consistency of installation depth, how much free end there is. But in answer to your question, once you establish the free end diameter, it does happen to be relatively consistent. So we will be happy to be of assistance with that um, if necessary. Okay, we have another question. Um, how do you remove uh, a pin that has been installed? That's a, that's a double-edged sword. If you are installing coil pin in a blind hole, like any pin of this, any pin, solid, coil, slotted, it's a, going to present you significant challenges. If, on the other hand, you have access to both sides of the pin, it's actually pretty simple. Uh, typically, I recommend that folks look at the B maximum dimension of the pin. That would be your chamfer diameter. It's available in the catalog and pick a gauge pin or a punch that is larger than the B dimension and smaller than the hole so that you're not damaging the pin when you remove it in the event you want to reuse it and then simply introduce it to the end of the pin and knock it out with a hammer. Okay, so we have about five minutes left. Um, we do probably need at least a minute or so for the, the following the last slide. Um, 
we probably can can answer a few more here. We do have other questions that are that are here, so we will follow up with those that we're not able to get to. Um, but probably have time for about two more. Um, one of them we have from Jim. Are you able to accurately determine or estimate the insertion force before producing samples based on the mating parts? That would actually be very difficult, Jim. We do have a general idea internally of what the insertion forces are going to be. That's critical to us because we design and build a lot of the installation equipment that's used out there to install these products. Uh, we do, however, assign ample safety factors so we know we can install that pin with any variation that's inherent to the product. Uh, but one of the most critical aspects of that this question is that it's not just the coil pin. It's your surface finish in the hole, hole size, the, the pin size within its diameter range, etc. Very many uh, variables that are involved in that. So we can establish a minimum or a maximum typically, but a very finite value can be challenging. Okay, thanks Mike. So we, we probably uh, have time for, for one more here um, and then we will um, need to uh, continue on just for the sake of time. So um, Joanna has a question on how are these pins manufactured? The, this, manu this product is manufactured of, of uh, sheet metal strip that's rolled. Obviously a good deal of the process is proprietary which we can't get into but uh, it is manufactured of rolled strip which we subsequently chamfer or taper and, uh, and, and that's it. Okay, thanks Mike. Thank you for those who, who have questions in and for those um, that we weren't able to get to. Again, we'll follow up with you uh, later on. Okay, so just a, a quick slide here on future webinars uh, in the pipeline. Um, so coming up, you know, this one today was an introduction to coiled spring pins. We went over a, a lot of different areas within that. Some of the future ones will be shorter and then more specific to a certain application or situation. So how to design the optimum hinge, how to select the proper diameter and duty, and in others, how to choose the most cost-effective alignment dowel, um, and then beyond coiled spring pins, a comparative analysis of coatings and platings for industrial fasteners, how to properly select compression limiters and inserts for plastic assemblies, and then on the insulation equipment, uh, heat versus ultrasonic insulation of inserts. But we would really like to see, or like to know what you would like to see. So if you do have ideas or certain areas uh, for future webinars, please let us know at info at spiral.com and we'd be happy to uh, incorporate your feedback. So that does conclude uh, our webinar for today. We really want to thank everyone uh, for joining us today. Please contact us at any time if you have any questions. We'd be happy to discuss your next application. We look forward to working with you on your next project. Thanks again.